Hey everybody. So today is October 21st and I have a particular longer term language project planned starting right after Thanksgiving because my birthday is in February and I decided that if I start the day after Thanksgiving I'll have a 90 day span to do um, this next bigger language project. But it's October right now and Thanksgiving is in 35 days. That's um, five weeks. So what what language thing can you do in five weeks? I mean I just finished this Turkish um, project. Didn't quite make the amount of Turkish that I, I wanted to, um, but I wanted to take a break from Turkish and try something different. So what am I going to do for a five week language project? Well, um, I decided that it's pretty autumnal outside, <laughs> um, not quite winter yet, but it's still cooling down, the leaves are changing, and for some reason, when I think about autumn, I think about Western Europe, I mean Eastern Europe, pardon me, not Western Europe, and I've been interested for a long time in um, languages of the Balkans, but I haven't really jumped into them. But five weeks isn't really enough time to go into a language that's completely new, that you don't have um, that much connection to, at least for me, because I'm really busy. I don't have the time to, to do just this, um, this language 24-7. So I wanted to pick something a little bit easier. And as, um, the, as it turns out, uh, I have a polyglot group that I started here in Seattle on the Sapon Meetup, and we have two types of meetings. We have our regular polyglots just talking whatever language meetings, and then we have our romance language meeting. And recently I was looking at what languages we speak in the romance language meeting and um, what languages are in the romance languages, and there are two significant gaps. One is nobody speaks Catalan or Occitan or any of the Languedoc family. And the other is nobody speaks Romanian. Or if they do, they haven't mentioned it to me and they haven't been coming. So I decided maybe Romanian would be a good thing to do in these five weeks. So I have already a copy of Teach Yourself Romanian. It's um, a little older, since I think now they call it Complete Romanian. I've had it for, for several years now, and I've, I've looked at it before. Um, but I've only done a couple chapters, and it was years and years ago, and I don't remember anything. So this is basically starting from scratch, except for the fact that I already speak French, and Portuguese, Spanish, and Italian, and have studied some Latin. So it's not a from zero to hero mission, it's a from um, a lot of cultural understanding and let's just see where we get type of mission. So I am going to uh, do a blog post, put this up there on the blog and evaluate what the best way is for me to approach this, which I'm going to start today because I really want to dive into the language in what little time I have because I'm really busy with work. and we'll see we'll see just what happens um, part of what I'm interested in with languages and part of why I started a polyglot group is having community speaking with people and there are no other speakers of Romanian in my polyglot group right now but I'm encouraging you and anybody I know to start learning Romanian and do this month with me. And I'm going to encourage everybody in my polyglot group to do the same thing because it's always fun to learn with each other. It doesn't mean that we have to be using the same materials. Even sometimes it's even better to use different materials um, just to have this goal of getting somewhere with the language and then creating this uh, way, this opportunity to communicate with each other in it. So uh, stay tuned for um, updates on this mission and more specific um, blog posts detailing what I'm going to do for 
um, in order to to accomplish this mission. Um, and yeah, that's that's going to be that's it. Um, Move to that.